Stearns Family Maple taps a north-facing sugar bush at an elevation of 1,900 feet in Bridgewater, Vermont. We've got 350 taps or so running all on 3 16 back to a collection tank. And then we pump the sap to the sugar house, which is about a quarter mile away. In a good year, we boil 3,000 gallons of sap on a 20-year-old liter 2 by 6 We'll burn about four cords of wood in maybe 100 hours of boiling. In March 2022, Leader offered to loan us a pre-production model of their Mini Micro. Even though it was the middle of sugaring season, I headed to Swanton to meet with Shane and Kevin for an RO crash course. Do you have somebody that knows how to run an RO? Uh, not really. Okay. Right, so you turn it on, mm -hmm. hold to start. Yep, that'll, that'll give it power and then you hold to start it. And once that pressure switch engages, the machine will stay running on its own. It will change the operation. So filtering is going to change a little bit. You're going to filter more off and you will have the time in between some of those draws. This is in concentrate cycle. So if you want to go to rinse cycle. Now we're in rinse cycle. Soap, acid, and then your test strips. Now, wash cycle, that'll be a little bit different. You want to turn that. Now you're going to be in wash cycle. That's just going to come down through here. And that was it. After a stop for some hardware and a few texts with Shane, I managed to plumb the RO into our setup. Fits right in the back of my truck. Yes, it does. Thanks, man. Yeah, you got it. Good luck. We'll Any be in touch. Questions? So here we are at the back of the sugar house. I've got the mini micro on a table. I've got some optional elements bolted to the wall and the whole thing is plumbed together with half inch and three quarter inch tubing. Because this is a brand new machine, not even been released yet, there's no manual. So Shane was kind enough to give me a diagram on how to plumb it together. It uh, took me about a half a day yesterday. I was boiling at the same time, so it was kind of a stop-start thing. Uh, but I've never put in an RO before. I've never used an RO before, and it was really straightforward. Let me walk you through the elements. Mini micro, optional wash tank, optional valve kit. Now this valve kit is gonna save you a ton of time when it comes to putting it into different modes. Also have down here a strainer that's used to uh, filter the raw sap to make sure no debris gets into the pump. I have two tanks, sap tank, 500 gallons, and a permeate tank next to it that holds about 325 gallons. The concentrated sap goes into my existing manifold and into a 120 gallon uh, stock tank inside the sugar house. The biggest consideration for a sugar maker is How's it gonna fit into your existing workflow? You'll wanna do a little bit of homework to figure that out. Ideally, for me, this, would, this unit would be inside the sugar house where I can keep it safe from the weather, from freezing. There's only two buttons. Turn the key on, hold the start button until the pump engages. There's one control knob. The concentrate reads in gallons per minute. Right now I have it set at 0.4 gallons per minute, so that's roughly about 25 gallons an hour, and I'm hoping to get 4% out of that. I'll let you know later. Obviously, if you turn it up and run it faster, you'll get more throughput, but a lower bricks. This thing makes very little noise. If this was in the sugar house, you wouldn't even hear it. This is our two by six. Made in Swanton by Leader in 2003, it served us well. It burns about 25 gallons an hour, and I have 120 gallons in my stock tank. So that gives me about four hours. The RO is still running. Let's see if it can keep up. Syrup comes off the evaporator a bit quicker. Uh, and in greater quantity than I was used to. Sweet. After a few hours of boiling, I had to increase the flow rate to match my boiling rate, which dropped the brick somewhat. 
The next day was showery, so I rigged a tarp over my temporary setup and kept the RO running while I continued to boil. With the concentration cycle complete, I ran permeate through the RO to rinse the membranes. Over two days of using the RO, I processed 550 gallons of sap. It spit out 240 gallons of permeate, the equivalent of 10 hours of boiling, of standing in front of this rig and throwing firewood in it. And not only I saved the time, but I saved the firewood. My stainless steel liter stock tank was noticeably scummier, which I needed to hose down with some warm water. Washing was straightforward. First, I rinsed the RO with permeate, then mixed two and a half gallons of warm water with a teaspoon of wash powder in the wash tank and ran it in circulation mode for 30 minutes. I then tested the pH level to make sure it matched 12 on the scale and then rinsed the RO again with more permeate. The entire process took less than an hour. I also changed the pre-filter once about midway through the season. You can see here it's discolored and a bit slimy. When to change it depends on the quality of your sap. Twenty twenty two turned out to be a record year for us. Both sap collected and syrup made were up well over thirty percent from our previous best year. But I couldn't have been able to handle it. I couldn't have been able to keep up without the RO. Let's look at some numbers. In the first part of the season without the RO, we boiled 1,400 gallons of sap in 40 hours and made 15 gallons of syrup. That's a ratio of 93 to 1, although half of this was low brick sap at about 1.6%. The second part of the season, running the RO for a total of about 100 hours, we processed 2,700 gallons of sap, boiled for 64 hours, and made 48 gallons of syrup at a ratio of 47 to 1. Energy saving was significant too. Although we burned 4.3 cords of wood this year, compared to earlier years without an RO, I would have needed closer to 6 cords this year, and I just didn't have it. That 100 hours of electricity cost me less than 25 bucks. So the big question is, is the Mini Micro a good match for my operation? Well, technically, Leader rates the Mini Micro for up to 250 taps, and I'm well over that with 380. And it couldn't always keep up with the flow rate I needed at 4% bricks while I was boiling. But I compensated by running the RO earlier in the day and trying not to boil until I had 100 gallons of concentrate. The alternative would mean going to a model that cost a couple of thousand dollars more than this one. And because it would need 220 volts, that would cost me several thousand dollars to upgrade my sugar house. On balance, being underpowered is still attractive and a good fit for my operation. Bottom line, the Mini Micro is the best return on investment I could make for my sugar house. Sure, upgrading my 20-year-old evaporator to a more modern 2x6 would give me a bump, but that again would cost me thousands of dollars. And cutting or buying six or seven cords of wood will get physically harder or more expensive, or both. And did the syrup taste any different? Not at all. Thanks to Leader for loaning me the Mini Micro. It made a big difference to my season and convinced me that an RO can help an operation of any size even the smallest. I've already got my order in for 2023.